Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to take a look at installing Hamlib 4.1 on your Raspberry Pi. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so a couple of quick things to cover here before we get to the directions. Uh, if you're running build a -Pi, you are probably going to be running Hamlib 3.3. When you upgrade to 4.0, there are a couple of little uh, things you do need to be aware of. First, I'm not certain that Direwolf 1.6 will support uh, Hamlib 4.0 uh, when it concerns rig control. And then the second thing you need to be aware of is if you're not using FL Rig and you're running a rig controller Hamlib from the command line, then the radio numbers have changed. So let's go ahead and kind of take a look at a couple of things real fast from the command line. First command I'm going to run is RIGCTL uh, space hyphen hyphen version. What that's going to do is that's going to tell me that I have Hamlib 3.3 installed. So let's clear that screen and next I'm going to run uh, RIGCTL space hyphen L. Now if I ran it just with a hyphen L it will list out every single radio that is supported and it will also list the rig number right over here uh, in the first column. So I'm going to clear the screen again. I'm going to run that again, rig control space hyphen L. But this time I'm going to uh, search for the 857 specifically. This is the Yezu 857. When I run that you're going to get a rig number of 122. Now this is something to keep in mind and I'll show you why after we get the new version installed. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and take a screenshot of what's on my screen currently and we can do that with SCROT. We'll go ahead and hit return. And since I'm in uh, my desktop directory, you'll notice that it put uh, that screenshot right over here on my desktop. Okay, so now that we've uh, kind of gone through a few of the caveats, let's open up a web browser and let's navigate over to the SourceForge, SourceForge page for Hamlib. And I'll leave a link to this uh, right here on the screen and also I'll leave a link to it down in the description below that you guys can follow. Once you get on this page, you're going to come into the Files uh, tab here. So I'll go ahead and click on that. We'll give that just a couple of seconds to load. On the next page, you're looking for Hamlib right here. So go ahead and click on Hamlib. And next up, as of the time of this recording, uh, 4.1 is the latest version. So I'm going to go ahead and click on 4.1 right here. And once you get to the next page, you're going to go ahead and start scrolling down the page. We're looking for a specific file format here. Let's see if I can find that real quick. You're looking for this tar.gz file right here. So once we find that, it's hamlib-4.1.tar.gz. Let's go ahead and click on that. And it'll take just a couple of seconds to get that file downloaded. Once the download finishes up, you can just go ahead and minimize or close your web browser. We'll be done uh, with that for now. Uh, next thing we want to do is open up the File Explorer, and then I'm going to go over to the Downloads directory. We'll double-click on that. You'll find Hamlib-4.1 in this directory. Let's right-click on that and say Extract Here. And that'll take care of getting it extracted into uh, a folder. So we can go ahead and close out of the file browser. And let's head over to the terminal. Now, we need to move over to our downloads directory first. So I'm going to do that with cd space tilde forward slash downloads. And downloads starts with a capital D. 
we'll go ahead and press return there. Let's just clear that screen and list out that directory. You should see your Hamlib 4.1 directory in blue. Let's move into it with cd space hamlib hyphen 4.1. And if you just type uh, cd space ham and hit your tab key, it should auto-complete for you. Once we're inside of this directory, the first command we need to run to start the build is going to be dot forward slash configure. And it'll take that a couple of minutes to run. As soon as that finishes up, I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, so after the configure command completes, let's go ahead and just uh, clear the screen. Well, got to spell it right. Next command we want to run is make. And this one is going to take a few minutes to run. Uh, I can't remember exactly how long. I want to say 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes to complete. So I'm going to let this sit here and cook for a little while. And I'll be back with you guys as soon as this uh, command finishes up. And we'll move forward. Okay, once the make command finally finishes up, let's just go ahead and clear the screen. The next thing we want to run is sudo space make space install. This doesn't take near as long to run as the make command did. So we'll give this just a couple of seconds. There's one more command uh, that we'll need to run and then we'll show you a few things uh, concerning the new uh, 4.1 version. Once it does finish up, let's just go ahead and clear the screen one more time and let's run sudo space ld config. Press return, and that's it. We're done. So I'm going to go ahead and move back to my home directory just by using the cd command. And let's go ahead and run rigctl space hyphen hyphen version. And you'll now see we have 4.1 installed. Now, one of the things I was showing you uh, previously was a rig number for the, uh, the Yezu 857. So let's go ahead and run the same command that we ran earlier one more time. So R, uh, RIG CTL space hyphen L. And then we're going to pipe that through the grep command and search for 857. We'll go ahead and press return. Now, what you're going to notice is the rig number has changed for the 857, and it's going to change for the vast majority of radios. So you'll see that uh, now it's 1022. Let's go ahead and open up that screenshot from before, and let me pull that up and see if I can zoom in a little bit to make that actually readable. There we go. Uh, and you'll see uh, from before that that rig number was 122. So uh, a lot of the rig numbers have changed. So if you're running rig control from the command line, this is something you're going to need to uh, keep in mind. Maybe you've written custom scripts to start things. Maybe you're starting rig control uh, at boot. You will need to note that uh, we do have new rig numbers to work with. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I have put off upgrading uh, build a pie to 4.0 or 4.1. It just came out of uh, Release Candidate uh, very recently. Uh, so now we're starting to take a look at integrating a stable version into build a pie, uh, hopefully in the next version. Now, if you are running build a pie and you're piping everything through FL Rig, that rig number actually did not change. So let's see if I can uh, run a grep command here for FL rig. And you'll notice FL rig's rig number is still 4, which is what it was in previous versions of uh, Hamlib as well. So it's uh, not too difficult to upgrade, but you may run into some issues depending on how you use your particular system. All right, guys, I hope you found this helpful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.